Hey folks, Ariel over here. Come along today while we try to split my current beehive, one colony in there, into three. Um, this is an experiment. I am learning, but this is what we're going to try. They've been really active. That hive is really full. They had all 21 frames that fit in there pretty much full. Not all fully capped honey, but full of uh, something or another. And I don't want them to swarm and leave. So we're going to try doing basically what is called an artificial swarm or a split. And we're going to see if we can get ourselves three hives instead of one going here on on the property, which is a little bit exciting. So um, that's gonna disrupt their their lives a little bit for sure. So I'm gonna go put a bee suit on so that um, I can just work calmly and not have to worry about if I, you know, have some irritated bees. So come on and see how this works. So the first thing I've done here is get the new hive all ready. The doors are all closed right now. They're in the front, one, two, three. The lid is open. And inside here, you'll see this divider board, turning it into two hives. And then I've got a few empty frames ready with foundation. There's one that's gonna be, this door is gonna be open, the middle door is gonna be closed, and this door is gonna be open for the two separate hives to each have their own entrance. Anyway, there's one frame for each of them there, and three empty frames here three empty frames there, either side of that divider. And this gap in the middle is gonna get filled with the bees we're gonna take out of the existing hive. So I wanted to pop back in here and say, keep watching guys, I did end up doing three splits there. For a minute, I got really scared that I didn't even have a queen. That was my lack of good observational skills on what was going on in my hive. I did not find her, but she was clearly there because there was freshly laid eggs. So. This hive sitting over here, the old one's way down there, like right out the, I can watch it from the kitchen window at the tiny house, um, has this hive box, has two colonies in it now. So watch the rest of this if you wanna see how we got there. This rock just keeps the lid from being able to accidentally blow off in our wind gusts we can sometimes get. And so why I'm bringing you guys along for all this is because I'm learning how to be a beekeeper. I'm not really trying to teach anybody. I don't feel like I know enough to do that at the moment, but I am uh, trying to learn this hive this year and hopefully maybe just show you guys what it's like to, to learn something new. So here's some empty foundation frames that I have ready to put in here in place of some of the ones I'm gonna take out. And anyway, if you want to learn from the same people I'm learning from, um, there's a few of those. Two books in particular. This thing is smoking. I know in the sun it's hard to see and it's really windy out here. So when I have it sitting up, well, not really windy, but breezy for smoke. When I have it sitting up high, it just kind of disappears. Um, Keeping Bees with a Smile probably first inspired me the, the most. And then Keeping Bees in Horizontal Hives is kind of specifically geared toward what I am doing. Um, this one I just put in a couple days ago. Anyway, I recommend both those books. You can find them or a hive like mine at horizontalhive.com. There's plans to build a free one or free plans to build your own if you like. Um, or he sells them already built as well. So these couple frames had just replaced the old ones that were the wrong frames, the uh, Langstroth frames that these guys showed up on. Um, already drawing wax on that one. And so I'm just moving them out of the way because I'm going to leave all of them in this hive. This is amazing. This has been in here for two days. And I don't know how well the camera is showing that, but they have almost fully drawn both sides of that one in two days. Started on the next couple. So I'm just setting those off to the side. Now we're into ones that they had been working on. This is a whole lot. It's heavy. Oh. Fully drawn out. And sorry, little bee. Uh, pinch you and filling with nectar so 
we are going to put some of these. I'm not going to explain everything or show everything in great detail here because I'm I'm learning and I'm trying to move as, as efficiently and fast as I can so I have them open and disturbed here for as little time as possible. But um, there's also a guy named Michael Bush who has a lot of writings you can find online. If I remember, I'll link to his site down below. I've learned a lot from his work. That one's also mostly uh, honey and nectar, so is the next one. Um, and then there's a guy whose name I can't remember who keeps bees up in Canada and one in Alaska. Those two are similar climates to mine, so particularly helpful for um, what, uh, you know, the, the particular challenges of my area. Once again, the smoke just kind of disappears into the breeze, but the bees see it or smell it or whatever. Um, so that's four frames that are either honey or nectar, which is what's being made into honey. Actually, that's five. These guys have been busy. These, by the time I get to here, I'm going to pull that one up just to show you. See how the top part is capped? That's fully finished honey. And lower down is working on honey. And in that one, I'm starting to see just a couple baby bees called brood. This next one, I see honey at the top and a lot of brood. So that probably means there's brood from here to here. And that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven frames of brood. That's why I think these guys uh, might be about to take off for a new home, which would be fine for them. I'm mostly doing the artificial split for my benefit so that I have um, the bees here, but also a little bit for their benefit. I've never seen a, a, high, a colony of wild bees survive long here. We don't have in this area many big old trees with good tree hollows for them and so they often end up in somebody's shed or house or something like that where often they'll end up being sprayed to death by somebody who doesn't know what they are um, so it's hopefully helpful to them a little bit as well so this one's got a lot of baby bees kind of here in the bottom honey up top nectar in between and I'm seeing both the larvae the uncapped larvas that look like a little white grubby thing and a whole bunch of capped brood. So I'm going to put this frame into, I've got a box here that's actually a swarm trap, but I'm using it as a, a frame carrying box today. So we've got some older bees, babies in there that are gonna hatch. I'm not sure exactly when, but I know they're older because they're already capped. They're not just eggs or grubs, larva. My bees are funny. This hive has been pretty chill, but every cloudy gray day when bees are usually less happy, mine have been very chill. And on a sunny day like this, this is when they tend to be the most grouchy, which is very backwards from what I hear bees are normally supposed to be like. Okay, that's also gobs of capped brood, some honey on top, and that's kind of the same on both sides. I see one drone cell there that's made a little bigger than the rest. Couple larvae. So I think I'm going to take that one as well. Now I'm moving these over here very gently because I don't know where my queen is. I suspect she's more toward the front end of this hive where I haven't got to yet. Um, and I don't know if I will find her. And if I do, fine. But it also doesn't really matter because whichever hives of this split end up without a queen, they're going to make a new queen for themselves from the uh, existing eggs. So it doesn't really matter which one she ends up in. So if I see her, that'll be cool. But there you can see they build an extra little piece on hanging down below. Okay, this has got some very mature um, brood because I see them hatching. I see bees chewing their way out of their cell. So that will be good to mix in with one that's got some less mature brood. Got three in there now. Let's see what we 
we got going on here. These are just fascinating creatures and I hope even though I don't feel like I can do a whole lot of teaching yet, maybe in a few years once I've had some more experience myself, um, but I hope maybe I inspire you to go learn from some other people who do know a lot about them. That's got a little bit of drone brood hatching and a lot, most mostly pollen and honey. So for now I'm going to leave that in here with my other honey ones. We are going to be giving some of those to the new hive, uh, our new hives. So they, you need this little tool often because they use their propolis, which is like bee cement, and uh, glue everything closed. Because they're very good at building that way. See what we got going on here. A little bit of brood, a little bit of drone, a bunch of honey, some nectar. Kind of the same on both sides of that one. So I'm going to leave that one in here. First, what I want to do is get my my frames of mostly brood sorted out. Lots of nice capped honey there on top. Got some brood down low. A lot of empty cells that it looks like just hatched out. On this side, kind of the same thing. So that one doesn't have a lot of brood either. So for our purposes right now, we're going to leave that with the frames. We've got similar there, a little more brood in the center that haven't hatched yet. And some pollen. This corner's got a lot of pollen, well both corners there, honey at the top. I'm looking for some that have hopefully more brood to go in our moving box here. And I'm seeing random drones through here. They're the male bees. There's a handful in the hive. It's mostly the working female bees. Got some more drone brood. Honey, nectar, grubs. What I'm looking for at this point is um, I want some more of the very, very young bees to go into each hive. Or actually some eggs. bees um, to do two splits like I wanted. And that one's mostly pollen again. Okay, I'm thinking Given that I'm not seeing, I'm actually wondering now if I have a queenless hive. I know she was in here two weeks ago when I was in it, but 
now I am not seeing many, uh, not sure any new eggs. So we got hatching brood there. Just double checking what I have here. Hatching brood. some new little eggs. Again, that's pretty full closed brood on both sides. grubs but no eggs okay so I'm going back through and looking a little closer and I was wrong I have to look closer it's so hard to see through this veil thing um, this frame indeed does have baby bees and eggs they're so tiny that they looked uh, empty to me so we got brand new eggs on that one. Well, oh, there I just found it's like watching for fish. Once you spot them, you see more of them. I've got brand new eggs on this one as well. I guess I've been looking so hard for eggs. So I'm gonna put one with little eggs over here. This one does have very little larvae in there as well as some hatching ones. Little teeny tiny, just above egg stage. I think at this time I'm just going to do one split instead of two. So we're going to put, so we got some little babies. This is lots of mostly honey and um, pollen. you get to come along and learn with me. Got scared there for a minute. Yep, new babies. Just teeny tiny. On there, so the queen really had moved pretty far over. Okay, so let me think. I got some older brood that's hatching. Some baby bees. Here, so I think I'm gonna take. Oh boy, I don't know. What I'm going to do is with this here for now, but I am going to take it here in a minute. My box only holds so many frames, so let's. Smoke kind of makes them crawl away from that edge and then I can 
get the frames back together without squishing any bees. Come on, ladies. There we go. Okay, so they're still coming and going from the hive entrance there in the front. So I'm going to take that one over in a minute to our new spot. I'm going to put my hive tool. Thought about not filming this at all because I wanted to really concentrate on what I was doing, but I thought some of you guys might enjoy it. So we'll see how scattered this video ends up being by the time I get done. That one is indeed nectar and pollen. So we're going to leave that one here, I think, for this hive. Colony. Make sure you get these frames tied up against each other so that everything fits. So they've got some older brood, some eggs, some uh, honey put back in this frame that they were just starting to draw. This one they were just starting to draw. started on yet. But they are the ones they had, so put them back. And they should have enough empty stuff to work on because that's four, five, Okay, and these we're going to take over to our, our new hive as well. And I'm going to give these guys one more empty to work on because they have been so vigorous and I don't want to have to get back in here right away again. Right down there, ladies. I can seal that up. This is so sticky. Very, very good bee house building cement. You know what? I'm giving them one more empty frame. Okay, then I'm gonna put my divider board in there. And we're gonna take these guys over to our new hive, just so they're not too irritated this whole time. Put the lid back on temporarily, and we're going to move. Oh man, I can't even tell you guys how hot I am right now in this suit, and with uh, walking across there, even with just five frames, it is uh, heavy. So, this is one that's got a lot of capped brood and bigger larvae that Put right there up against that empty one. Hey guys, here's your new house. And this one also has a bunch of cat brood, and of course, there's a bunch of honey on top of both of those. This 
And I believe that our no, that one's our, our nectar and honey frame. Put that back this way a little bit. It seemed to like to have the brood closer to the door. This is one that had hatching broods. We know they're fairly mature. We're going to give that to this side. I am back to doing three splits. Probably a more experienced beekeeper would have never even panicked about having a, a queenless hive because they would have seen right away what took me a second look to, to find. And this one, just double checking. Has my teeny tiny eggs in it. So if this hive didn't end up with the queen, they're gonna use those to make themselves a queen. So, We've got three frames of brood with honey on top, a good bit of it. A full frame of honey and pollen. And then we got some empty frames here for them to start on. One, two, three. Okay. This guy right now has one frame with brood and baby bees. And we are going to take my box back because I can only carry so much at once and uh, get the rest of them and be right back. Okay. Back and out of breath again with the rest of them. I actually did have a lot more frames with teeny bees and eggs like I thought I did, except I didn't see him the first time around because I wasn't looking close enough. That one I just put in there as a spacer to keep him from flopping while I walked across the property. I don't know if I can remember which is which. Yeah, this one has tons of tiny eggs, so we're putting that right in on this side, up against the first one we put in there, which is more mature brood. Empty, more mature than teeny tiny eggs. And we left one full frame of teeny tiny eggs along with a whole bunch of larvae in the original hive. Don't know which one's ending up with the queen, but this way it shouldn't matter. Got more teeny tiny eggs there. So I actually wanted to if you had your act together better than me you could do this more efficiently but I wasn't sure if I had a lot of little eggs in this hive on this side and since I realized I have way more than I thought there for a second I'm giving these guys this frame with teeny tiny brood eggs as well so everybody should have the ability to make themselves a new queen if they needed to so even if I lost our original queen in this whole process or something, and all three hives don't have a queen, they should all be okay still. Eat, ladies. Okay, so we've got teeny tiny egg one there. This one I think was just nectar and honey. Sometimes that shiny wet nectar looks a lot like the little cups that have baby brood into me, or the, the teeny eggs. They look shiny and wet too. This one's definitely nectar and honey. We gave the other hive a few of them, so we're gonna give this hive some as well. If I took long enough for my smoke to burn out, I'm trying to do this as efficiently as I can, guys. I know, ladies, I know. I 
this one is honey and a bunch of pollen. And we gave the other side one of those two. So. These are our empty frames for them to start work on. There, sweetheart, move them over. So that's fishy. Okay. So. Now I might put one more empty frame in there just to uh, use up the space. And as you can see, I've got a bunch of bees in here. Again, because I'm not being very efficient here. Pull these up as we're just going to tap them down in here. So that way most of them fell out, and the ones that fly off, they're... Uh, their GPS's are still set for their original hive, so they should fly back there and end up there. Okay, so we're going to open a hive door here so they can start to come out. I am going to go grab a branch and put in front of each of these doors to help get them started reorienting to their new spot. So I think I'm going to shut the camera down now because what I mostly have to do is a whole bunch of tidying up and you guys probably don't want to watch that. We hope you enjoyed it. Come back next time for more adventures. Thanks, Thanks for, for watching. watching.